Hey, so Galt here, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of click or metronome bleed, as well as other unwanted sounds using spectrum editing in WaveLab. Stay tuned for the end of the video, where I'm going to give you a free download of a click that doesn't bleed so much. All right, let's get to it. So I created this example using a really standard recording setup. The mic, about a foot away, pointed directly at the guitar with the metronome in my isolation headphones. Theoretically, I shouldn't get much click at all. And yet there it is anyway, creeping in towards the end of the sustain. If I can pick out where it is, you might imagine I can simply cut it away. But that leaves us with another problem. Instead of the natural sounding decay, we get something more like a stair step there. Well, that won't do. We need something a little bit more surgical. So I want to introduce you to a spectrum editor. We're going to use the one built into WaveLab since it integrates seamlessly with Cubase now. But you can use any spectrum editor you like. And WaveLab provides some nice loudness and frequency metering and a lot of other features useful for mastering and audio restoration and so forth. You can see the little spike in the frequency spectrum when the click comes in, but it would be even better if we could see that as a static display. That's exactly what a spectrum editor provides. Your frequencies from high to low. You can see the attack has basically the entire frequency spectrum filled out. And over time, the high frequencies dim out sooner and the low frequencies go on ringing. The brighter colors represent more energy in that part of the frequency spectrum. And you can see a nice natural decay right up into the point where there's the blip. That's our metronome. So you see how powerful this visual representation of frequencies over time can be. Now we know precisely where our click is, we can zoom in on that region and decide what to do about it. You can select a rectangular area just like this, and we can use damp to attenuate the signal by the gain amount of our choosing, and it's only gonna act in the frequency and time range that we've selected. Now visually, you can see that it leaves a hole in the frequency spectrum. Because the guitar is ringing continuously, and the sound we wanna remove is a broad spectrum of frequencies, damp is probably not the tool we'd wanna to use for something like this. There are some other selections here, Blur Peaks, which takes the frequencies with the highest level and attenuates or boosts those. There's Dispersion, which blurs the dynamics and pitches of the selected region, and a variety of fades. And you can make some selections about the filter style, the particular type of filter, band pass, lower high pass, the steepness of the curve. But for our purposes, we're gonna use the copy audio from one region to another, because what we really want is the sound of the guitar strum to go on ringing as if it was never interrupted by the metronome at all. And how this function works is pretty simple. You set the cursor to where you want to copy from and you select the region you'd like to copy to. Once it's all set in place, click copy. And there it is. Visually, this already looks pretty good certainly preferable to a really obtrusive click. But we can hear just a slight artifact. So I think we can do a little better. Let's undo, and we'll work with a smaller region to begin with. This is above the area that was giving us an artifact. So let's copy that. A lot dimmer, and we don't hear that skipping sound. In a busy mix, this might actually be enough, but let's keep going. For the upper frequencies, we copied a little of the region before the click. Let's get a little from after. Not sure that's an improvement. Let's expand this frequency range where the click remains. And there's two big harmonics. And rather than copying over all of the frequencies, let's just copy over the place that's actually a problem. One down, one to go. Select the click's harmonic. Set the cursor to where we want to copy from. Let's see what it sounds like. You can hear just a ghost of a click now.
It's so quiet now, it sounds natural. Like maybe a finger hitting the body of the guitar. You could live with this, if you had to. Now, I want to show you a similar tool that often yields a bit better result for situations like the one we're dealing with. That's Copy Ambience. It's in the same menu as Copy exactly. And let's undo back to our original state. And Copy Ambience will do something similar to Copy Exactly, except that it'll blur the dynamics and pitches of the source region, making it less identifiable. So we won't get that skipping repetition effect that we heard earlier. You can see in one step, we have something that's already a bit better. We can be a little more careful with our region. Looks like there's a little left over here. Let's clear that away. This is pretty good. We're left with a little knocking sound, like somebody bumped the guitar. Quite a lot better than the obnoxious click sound we started with. This is about as good as we're going to get it using this approach, so let's send it back to Cubase. If we click Trigger Update, WaveLab will print our changes to a new file in the same location as our old clip was. Definitely beats rendering and importing. <laughs> Nice, we saved the day. Now, knowing audio restoration techniques is helpful, but the best case scenario is to avoid click bleed at the recording stage. And I find Cubase's default click is pretty troublesome. It just seems to pop out in every texture. So the first step is assign new sounds to your metronome. In Cubase, you just click here and you can assign a new high and low click sound. I'd either recommend using sine wave-based click sounds, which will only have one frequency, not a bunch of harmonics, or I recommend using actual percussion sounds. So if you do get click bleed, it doesn't sound so out of place. Also, and this might seem obvious, keep the level of your metronome and your headphones in general as low as possible. And if you can route the signal into just one ear and keep that ear away from the microphone, you usually won't get any click bleed at all. An ounce of prevention, you know? Okay, that's it for this time. Check the links in the description where I've given you a click that won't bleed so much. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you catch my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Sahar Galt. I'll see you next time.